G'day. Let's examine the square root of 20. Square root. I'm using geometry language. I'm talking about a square. So there's a square involved here, and actually it's going to be square of area 20. Square root. We're looking for the root feature of the square of area 20, the base feature, the fundamental feature. You think about what that could mean. Well, it could only probably mean the, the most fundamental feature of a square is probably its side length. And that's indeed what we call the square root of 20. The side length of the square whose area is 20. Grand and good. There it is. So that's the meaning of the square root of 20. Find the side length of the square of that given area 20. But actually, I chose 20 deliberately because it's a particularly nice number. I can think of it as 4 times 5. Let me do that. Think of it as 4 times 5. That's 4 groups of 5. And 4, in its own right, is a square number. So I'm going to use that as my advantage. 4 copies of 5, but I'm going to do those 4 copies in a square array within my square of area 20. <laughs> Here, let me draw it this way. Let me divide the square of area 20 into quarters like this. A square of area 5, square of area 5, square of area 5, square of area 5, 4 groups of 5. But now I can see, I can look at the base length of this uh, square a different way. This is its own little uh, square here with side length given by the square root of 5, the, the base side length that gives the area 5. This is also root 5. We also said that this was all root 20. So actually, the area model is giving me a lovely way to see the square root of 20, which was chosen to be particularly nice as the square root of 4 times 5, is really 2 times root 5. Beautiful, beautiful. And young students are taught to do this all the time. And the area model gives a lovely way to seeing that, justifying that, at least if one of the factors is particularly nice, grand and good. You see many algebra programs and textbooks still to this day, commands like simplify the square root of 20. And I know students are meant to write 2 root 5, just like we did. I have to be very honest. If it's just by visuals alone, that looks way more complicated to me than that. I would not say that's simplified. That's not simplified at all. In fact, I have a hard time with the word simplify without any context. Simplification all depends on what you want to do next. If there is no next, then my answer is, it looks fine. Leave as it is, answer, root 20. I'm honest, I would leave as it is. It all depends on what you want to do next. So here are two questions about two things I might want to do with root 20. And in which case, I'm going to think, do I want to rewrite it or not? Here's my first question. If I was asked between which two integers does root 20 lie, I'm definitely going to leave as root 20. That's a much simpler form for answering that question because my brain sees right away that root 20 is smaller than root 25 and bigger than root 16. That is, I'm seeing that root 20 is between 5 and 4. Ah, between which two integers that lie? It's between 4 and 5. Root 20 must be 4 point something. Great. I would not be able to answer that question very easily by rewriting this as 2 root 5 in a knee-jerk way. Leave as it is. Simplify, if it's helpful to do so. All depends on what you want to do. It wasn't helpful for me to rewrite it. I'd love that. That is the simplest version for that question. But then here's a second question. Uh, does a square of area 20 and a square of area 5 fit within a square of area 40? Okay, all right, well, um, I want to get two squares fitting in a big square. So let me draw the big square first. It's going to be area 40. All right, 40. Um, I won't write the number 40 in there because I'm going to draw other things in it. But let me just write a side length. It's going to have to be the square root of 40. That's fine, square root of 40. All right, so I want to fit in a square of area 20 and a square of area 5. So my first instinct is, well, let's just draw in a square of area 20, and I'll write the area 20 there, and draw in a square of area 5. All right. Does that work? That seems the first thing to check. All right, so let's see, does that work? Um, all right, OK, so I'm going to see that this has a width of root 20, and this has a width of root 5. That's great. Um, is it fitting? All right, at this point, I now want to compare root 20 and root 5. Actually, I want to add those lengths together. So you know what? It is helpful for me to rewrite this as 2 root 5 plus another root 5. So the whole length is root 20 plus root 5 is actually 3 root 5. Yes, it is helpful to me rewrite root 20 in this context. All right, so this is 3 root 5 long compared to root 40 long. I hope that 3 root 5 is smaller than root 40, then it would fit. But actually, given what I've just learned about square roots, uh, I know that 3 root 5 is actually square root of uh, 9 times 5. It's actually square root of 45. Ah, that's longer than root 40. So this is not fitting. It's not fitting. 
OK, rewriting the, the, the uh, square root of 20 in this form was helpful with that question. That was the simplified form, made my life easier for this question. OK, uh, but I haven't actually answered the question because I realize if I'm going to stick with my squares being laid horizontally and vertically, they're not going to fit. But now I'm wondering, well, if I took this root 20 and tilted it, maybe there's enough space now to put a square over area 5, maybe in that uh, extra gap or something like that. Oh, OK, so actually this has become a very deep and interesting question. Now my brain's really worrying. Oh, I like this question. I invite us all to think about it. Can a square of area 20 and a square of area 5 fit inside a square of area 40? Let's think about it.